What brought us together, probably fate in the universe and love. Um, a lot so, of love. A lot of love, definitely. <coughs> I've experienced so much love, so. Yeah, absolutely. Those things. We are the Hudson Outfit, and you are tuned in to the Paper Lantern Lounge. This song is called Next Door Neighbor Blues. I know for me, a heavy, heavy, heavy influence uh, for me is John Mayer. I love his approach to guitar, and actually it changed my approach to guitar whenever I heard him play for the first time. Not the daughter's poppy stuff. I still have respect for that, but what I really love about him is his, uh, his roots blues approach. Uh, so that really inspired me to be like, oh, I think I could try to do that. And I've got a long ways to go before I get to him, but it's definitely my goal to be uh, that caliber of musician and that caliber of songwriter. We've got a lot of uh, musical influences. Uh, Pink Floyd, I like um, a lot of uh, newer bands that kind of have like a psychedelic rock influence. Tame Impala, that's a good one. Yeah, the Bright Light Social Hour. The Bright Light Social Hour, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Great band. Great band. Classic stuff too, like Led Zeppelin. Ze yeah. Led Zeppelin. For sure. Yeah. ACDC for me. Oh. ACDC. I can't started say listening the same, to first. but I, I respect it. For yeah, me, I, I would listen to classic rock at first. Yeah, That's how for I started. Sure. For sure. Definitely. Mostly the showmanship of, of some people, like Justin mentioned John Mayer, and I uh, saw his live album, and it changed my the way I look at music. So, uh, just heavy influence, John Mayer. Yeah, definitely. So my inspirations for playing music are uh, a lifetime in the making. I started playing music at a very young age. I came from a really musical family. Uh, my grandpa 
taught me to play music. He he taught me how to play the dulcimer at five, and we used to go around to craft shows, and uh, I used to play in front of people, and it was really cool, and I was like really addicted to the attention as a five-year-old, and it was fun. And I thought, oh, I really like this music thing. And so I grew up in that environment, and it started becoming more fostered and more fostered in me, and then I started playing drums when I was eight, and guitar when I was 12, and everything has just been uh, sort of history ever since, but it's definitely deep running in my family. What inspired me to play music? Um, I don't know, I, uh, I didn't know there was a different type of music than country music until I was, uh, I don't know, probably seven, eight years old. Um, I found a Cars, the band The Cars, uh, a CD of it in my dad's truck and I stole it and I listened to it and I just danced around in my room and little eight-year-old Steven. I couldn't believe that uh, there was other music out there and so I guess uh, ever since then I've been you know started guitar lessons shortly after that got my first guitar so uh, just kind of began from there been loving it ever since. Yeah kind of the same story for me um, I got my first it was a first act drum set just for kids when I was like eight or nine and then I saw the movie Drumline when I was like <laughs> That's 11. what inspired you to play music, yep. Nick Cannon? Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I thought it was cool. It looked like a lot of fun. It was cool. So the next year I joined the school band and then uh, got a drum set a year later and that kind of became my babysitter until I was about 16. <laughs> and I'm here. This is a song called Please Come Home. I think any musician, whenever they're answering the question, describe how much you would like to grow as a musician, is going to say, well, I want to be the best. I want to be the best. And uh, we all kind of have that competitive thing. But in the same, I think that our goal is not necessarily to be the best musicians in the whole world, but to, to utilize the platform that we're given with music and sort of uh, speak into people's lives. So my aspirations in my musical development and my songwriting development are definitely to, uh, to figure out how to be more honest and vulnerable with my writing and figure out how to really reach out to people and convey the messages that we're about, which is loving each other, 
which is uh, triumphing through really hard times and just overall enjoying life as much as you possibly can because I think people get kind of caught up in the mundane and we're not about that. If I had to describe where I want to be uh, musically, uh, I want to be funky. Uh, I just want to really be funky just as people look up at me and say, that guy's funky. Uh, but a, an analogy to kind of describe that would, I want to be like the gravy like mashed potatoes are pretty good, but like you put some gravy on it and that it's there. You're working with a good yeah. dish. <laughs> yeah, you're working with a good dish. I mean, a side at best, but you know. Yeah. Um, but I definitely want to be the gravy and just put that little funk on top of it. So, I mean, grow with these guys. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rather be playing with anyone else, so. For me, as long as I'm having fun and practicing every day, then that's good enough for me. This song is called Four Letter Words. drives me is uh, connecting with people, is, is developing deep relationships with people and uh, 
I used to be a real piece of trash. I used to treat people pretty badly and, and be a pretty selfish person. And so uh, what drives me is to better my, my roles and my relationships with people to a point where I'm no longer taking away from them, but I'm just pouring into them all the time, pouring in as much as I can. I think that that's maybe my life's ambition even more than music. Yeah, definitely connecting with people is, is beautiful. That's a good way to describe kind of what drives me. Um, I think what drives me the most is to, to understand more, whether that be other people or just the world around us. I mean, the world's kind of magical when you start to look at it and to look how things work. So I'm a real, like, I love watching science-y, like, YouTube videos about, like, the space and uh, kind of just mystified by it all. I, I really want to take it in for what it is. And uh, so I say that drives me a thirst to know and understand. Showing, showing and receiving love everywhere I go, everywhere I can. Same, same. I'll take, yeah, same I'll take same. your answer too. I'll take all, same, both same. of our answers and raise it your answer as well. Yeah. Okay. This is a song by Bill Withers. It's called Ain't No Sunshine. The highlights of being a musician are uh, the people you meet, the places you get to go, not the drives getting there sometimes, but the places you get to go, the people you meet, and uh, I don't know, there's something really, really uh, 
infectious about being on stage and, and bringing energy to a whole crowd of people and watching them kind of come alive as the show goes and, and taking them along a ride with you. I think, I think it's pretty fun to see how it affects people in a, uh, in a real way face to face. It's addicting. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's like, um, it's like uh, playing any sport, you know, the, when everybody around getting to watch you do what you've practiced. Um, I think the best part about being a musician is fulfillment. Um, and also getting to write something that people um, connect with. So you can write something because you're feeling a certain way and play it for people and they will they'll say, hey, I felt that way before and they will like the music. And so it's a way to kind of connect with people like we said. Um, but it's also, uh, it's just a fulfillment thing because you practice, you try and make little changes and when people notice and that's what you do it for. I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome to be a part of. This is a song about being crazy. It's called Maniac. I'm a one shot man, my daughter got a knife. Girl, you know I shoot to kill. And you understand this wasn't part of my life. I never meant to climb this hill. But baby girl, you gotta go let it down. I lose control. Somebody ends up in the dead. So say your prison is my hand and I'll supply all your needs to see what kind of feelings emerge. Oh, I'm a man. First album, <laughs> the first album I ever bought was the Marshall Mathers LP by Eminem and I used to put it in my portable CD player and put an NSYNC CD over on top of it and close it and whenever my mom asked what I was listening to I could show her NSYNC and not get in trouble for <laughs> listening to Eminem. What was yours? Uh, the first CD I got um, I think, I can't remember which one came first. Uh, I think it was Nellyville by Nelly. 
Um, and you know, pretty, uh, I, I don't really have words to say. I enjoyed it at the time. I really did. Loved it. I, uh, yeah, I probably listened to Shake Your Tail Feather um, quite, quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a young boy, I used to uh, have a deal with my grandparents that if I made good grades in school, like a certain amount of A's and uh, no C's or anything like that, that they would buy me a CD. So I got a report card one time in fourth grade and I didn't have a single C. I had mostly A's and a couple of B's, which was a, maybe a rare thing for me, I don't know. I wasn't very good at school there at the end, but anyway, so we go to Walmart and we're looking through and I'm like, I want a rap CD. And I'm in fourth grade, so I don't know a whole lot about rap. So I just go and I, I look and I'm like, oh, Will Smith, I know this guy. And so I'm like, yeah, the dude from the TV, Fresh Prince, that's my man, I'm gonna get it. And I get it, and it was Will Smith, Willinium. And uh, I jammed that thing for like three years. I didn't know there was any other music for like three years but Will Smith, <laughs> Willinium. And some of y'all may think that's embarrassing, but I embrace my true self, and I love you, Will Smith. <laughs> so if you're looking for the Hudson outfit on the interwebs, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is go to facebook.com slash the Hudson Outfit. We'll be there, you'll see our bright shiny faces in this funny hat. And uh, we'll be there. We have in the works our first EP, it's forthcoming. So we'll keep you guys updated via our Facebook page on that. So you can definitely find us there.